Hey, this is Dr. Johnny, and I want to talk to you today about something called Seasonal Affective Disorder, SAD. Uh, and it's a kind of winter blues that affects about half a million people a year in the country. And, and those are just those that are diagnosed with it. But like every one of these things, they kind of exist on a continuum. So some people just kind of get a little bit of mild winter blues. Some people really get taken to their bed. They, they just can't even function really on any kind of normal level. Um, so it affects people differently, and it usually starts this kind of year, this time of year. Um, and it, what it really is, what SAD really is, is a mild form of depression. And like uh, depression, it has a million different symptoms. I mean, uh, you know, lack of energy, lack of motivation, um, irritability, anxiety, and inability to sleep well, loss of libido. I mean, you name it. There's so many symptoms that go with this. It's kind of the symptoms of life when you think about it. Um, and like anything that has that many symptoms, it's very hard to find one single cause for it. There are a number of things that we think are involved in this. Uh, the first of which is uh, our biological clocks, our circadian rhythms. They change. They, they are really geared towards the light, which brings us to the, you know, the, the number one reason that most people uh, uh, feel stimulates SAD, and that's the lack of sunlight, the change in seasons. And, and what happens when you're not exposed to sunlight? Well, one thing that happens is you don't make as much vitamin D, so there's a connection to that. Uh, it also affects your melatonin levels, and melatonin is a wonderful... A hormone that's released when you're sleeping, but it has a good side and a bad side. The good side is it, it is a tremendous antioxidant and has some anti-cancer um, activity. Uh, the bad side is it makes you sleep a lot, and that's sometimes associated with even more depression. So we know that all of this has something to do with sunlight. We know that it has something to do with sunlight. We know that sunlight has a profound connection to vitamin D. And we also know that probably 75% of the population is vitamin D. Uh, I, I don't want to say deficient because that's, a def that's actually a defined number, but certainly suboptimal. Certainly not getting the, the, the optimal levels of vitamin D. So the, the very first thing that I would say for this uh, a part of the, uh, of the year is it's particularly important to supplement with vitamin D. And, you know, I live in Southern California and I play tennis two hours every single day and I supplement with vitamin D. I mean, it's really hard to get too much of this uh, if you're under the 10,000 I use a day. So I, I would recommend this to be a very, very good time to make sure to not stop supplementing with vitamin D. But I don't want this little short video to be about, um, you know, a prescription for supplements for, for SAD. What I'd rather talk to you about are some lifestyle things that we absolutely know have an effect on mood and, and, and an effect on resilience and an effect on the immune system. And there are three things. The first of which is sleep. Really profound, restful, uninterrupted, deep, sleep in the dark, in the right temperature. I can't tell you enough what a profound effect this has on mood, on hormones, on your metabolism, on just about everything that contributes to well-being. The second thing is exercise. Now, I know it's kind of a paradox. If you're feeling kind of depressed and you're having a little bit of winter blues and you're not really feeling a lot of motivation and energy, you don't really want to exercise. But if you can break that cycle and even get moving a little bit, you know, a lot of people will say to me, Dr. John, I live in Minnesota. I, we don't even see the sun. You can't even go out. It's Chicago on the lake. You know, I, I get that. And, and that certainly makes it more challenging. But there, there are solutions to that. I lived in Manhattan in February. Um, it, it's not fun to go out. We had a 46th floor building in Manhattan Plaza. I used to run the stairs. Now, not suggesting everybody do that. I'm saying that there are solutions. Get a little mini trampoline. Know, do some uh, videos in front of the in, in, in front of the fireplace, but but you've got to find a way to get moving because it is such a a, a wonderful uh, it's the opposite of a downward spiral. You, your neurotransmitters in, improve, um, your circulation improves, the oxygen to your brain improves, your well being improves. Um, so you do a, you you really do a great deal for yourself to help fight SAD by exercising on a regular basis. And the third thing is the most important of all, and that's diet. You know, these, these two acron this acronym SAD works really for two things, the standard American diet and seasonal affective disorder. They're not unrelated. So this is not the time to throw caution to the winds with your diet. This is the time to not stock up 
on the processed carbohydrates and the sugar. There's really no time to do that, but this is the worst time to do it, the worst time to give into comfort foods because you really need the protein and the fat that give you sustained energy and focus, calmness, clearness, a, a smooth running metabolism. All those things are going to serve you very well when life throws you a, uh, a curveball like SAD. Look, th the fact is life throws us curveballs and, and, and to pretend otherwise is just foolish. Uh, and, and SAD, uh, change in rhythms, a change in light patterns, a change in exposure to the sun, those are curveballs for some people, just like a hurricane is a curveball for some people, but some houses can survive that hurricane and some are, uh, are destroyed by it. And that has to do with resiliency. It has to do with the infrastructure. It has to do with uh, you know, building up the resources that we have in our bodies to deal with these things. Because I believe most of us can deal with them and they, they don't have to be medicalized. We don't have to take drugs for them. We can do it by building up our resilience, building up our own infrastructure, making ourselves stronger spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally, uh, in every possible way. And those three things, sleep, diet, and exercise, I'll tell you, Scott Adams, who wrote the best book I've ever read in my life on success, uh, which is called How to Fail at Just About Everything and Still Come Out Ahead. Um, he says, and I believe him 100%, and I know this to be true from experience, that if you handle those three things, if you really eat right, if you really sleep well, and if you stay active every day, 90% of the stuff that life throws you, you'll be able to deal with a lot better. And that includes seasonal affective disorder. And we're here basically to help you build that infrastructure. This is Dr. Johnny. Thanks for listening.